Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that you will continue your prayers. Now that we have crossed over into 2022, I want to say Happy New Year and may, amen, your year be a blessed one. We have truly came through, amen, the labor and turmoil of 2021. We have come through some times of up and down, but we ask that you will continue to just hold on to your faith. Continue to pray for our sick and our shut in. Continue to pray for those who are going through a time of bereavement. There are things that are happening that has not happened in the way before, but we give God praise that we are still standing. We ask that you join us this morning as we go to the Word of God in this new year, this first Sunday of 2022, coming out of Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through that of 27. And I would like to speak to us today from the thought, a new way for a new day. We ask that you will continue putting your children on for Bible study on the first and third Sundays at 8.45 to 9.15, a half an hour. Can you give God a half an hour? Can your child give God a half an hour just to learn and to gain understanding of who God is? We ask that you come join us now. Remember, this is a brand new year. And I'm asking that you keep your head up high and that you walk in the newness and the blessedness of Almighty God through His Son, Jesus the Christ. Come now, join us in our service on this first Sunday of a brand new year, 2022. Amen. As we speak to you once again from a new way, for a new day. Have a blessed day in the Lord.
Good morning to my brothers and sisters. We greet each and every one of you with the joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We come before you this morning on this brand new year, thanking God for allowing us to cross over to 2022. We ask you to join us this morning as we come out of the book of Ephesians. We're coming out of chapter 4. Amen. We'll begin our reading for this morning from verses 17 through that of 26. Verses 17 to that of 26. We ask that you will pray with us as we expound upon these words that Paul had written to the church of Ephesus to exhort them to a unified state. These words are penned coming out of the New King James translation. Beginning at verse 17, it reads thusly. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to the work of all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. And be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. 17 verses through the 27th verse is where I am coming from. I added the 27th so that we would get a greater understanding as to Paul, amen, bringing about a new understanding to those in the church of Ephesus. I would like to speak to you from the thought theme or subject a new way for a new day. A new way for a new day. Knowing that we have entered into a new year, knowing that we have come out of 2021, we need to walk into this new year a new way. Paul was trying to bring them to an understanding of the power of unity. He exhorted them, amen, in this manner. He encouraged them. He tried to inspire them through the teaching of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many things that they, amen, had learned in their growth was now to be changed with the new man that they had now received. Paul writes, amen, amen, in that, in putting on a new man. Brothers and sisters, his exhortation or his encouraging words was to that of mutual love. Paul, amen, brought about a moral condition of the Gentiles, amen, that they should not walk in the vanity of their own minds. The word itself, amen, vanity, 
means to walk with an inflatable pride. Amen. Or uh, uh, as in one's self. Let me say that again. Vanity is inflatable pride in one's self or one's appearance. That's one of the breakdowns of the, of the definition of vanity. It talks about vanity being valueless, amen, of no means whatsoever. But it is coming out of the pride, amen, of humanity who think themselves to be more than they ought to think. Brothers and sisters, now that they had received Jesus Christ, now that they, amen, uh, have understood one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Coming out of this chapter, we are looking at, amen, a new way for a new day. When we have become born again, we don't carry, amen, our old ways when we are practicing the ways of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, here in these verses, as we have read to you this morning, we need to understand that the exhortation to that of mutual love, unity, amen, amen, and that of concord with one another, amen, there fellow Christians, amen, and purity and holiness of heart and life. We should, amen, have a change in our mindset and our thought pattern. Those that, amen, may have done us wrong, we should practice forgiveness as we walk along this walk. So brothers and sisters here in the man, the 17th verse, he said, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Emptiness, a man will bring you nothing. Carnal minds will always, a man, keep up disdain and disturbance, a man, and conflict among the congregation. Paul did not want this among the believers of Christ. But Paul wanted them to walk in the knowledge of Christ, in the newness of Christ, knowing that if Christ, amen, had no respect the person on them, they should not have respect the person on others. So here, amen, he encourages them not to walk a sinful walk, not to continue the practice of things that they were brought out of but to put them down and put on the new man. Amen. And now that we are going into 2022, you ought to empty, amen, uh, your uh, trunk of those things uh, uh, that did not mean much to you in 2021. Those things, amen, that you may not have, amen, liked or that you may, people that have mistreated you. You need to let that go as we come in to a new day. And as we come into this new year, we need to come in a new way. Don't let nobody else have power over your joy, your walk with the Lord, and uh, your spiritual love. Or uh, in verse 18, he lets us know having the, uh, the, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance uh, that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Now we're talking about spiritual darkness. There are many people who are still walking in spiritual darkness. And most of the time, what we are angry about has nothing to do with our salvation, but has everything to do with our pride. Oh, the Bible teaches us, amen, coming out of that a proverb, amen, that God hates a proud look. Therefore, he hates a, a proud walk when it is trying to better yourself over someone else. So here, amen, he says uh, they are walking in spiritual 
darkness, having their understanding darkened. Don't you know there are many people, amen, in the world today who do not have the right understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. They don't have a true understanding of the love of Almighty God. If they did, we would be treating one another a better way. We, we, we would not hold this thing. We would not be separated, amen, in our love for Christ and the church. He said, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Amen. Don't you know that hate is a, is, a, is, a, is a choice? Don't you know, amen, that living foul is a choice? Don't you know that following the world is a choice? So he talks about, amen, the sinful walk needs to change. The estrangement, amen, that comes with spiritual darkness when one is walking in vanity. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, we need to look at the fact that spiritual blindness, amen, will not allow us to see the dangers that are in our way. But aren't you glad that being a born-again child of God, Paul is taking time to educate the church in Ephesus concerning spiritual maturity, not walking as the world, not following, amen, wrongdoings, not getting upset when God is continually blessing us. So he encourages them Amen. To turn away from those things. Amen. That will bring evil hearts. That will bring division among the church family. Not only the church family, but the family at home. Look at what he says in spiritual blindness in their heart. This was something that had reached the heart. This is something, amen, that the devil, amen, has called to divide them one from the other. But because they were now children of the king, Paul was instructing them in the right way that they should walk. Oh, verse 19 said, being past feeling had given themselves over to lasciviousness. That, that is our practices of incivility, amen, insensibility, excuse me, and our practices of evil, amen. Whatever was going on, they didn't have a problem feeling that they were able to join it. So he talks about, amen, uh, the things, uh, amen, that will... Uh, Amen. Caused the head of God to turn. Evil that was being perpetrated in the world. But now he was teaching them that they were no longer of the world. That they had been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. They had been taught the ways of the Lord. And now having this understanding, look at what he says. Amen. No longer will you walk in, amen, greediness. Amen. No longer will you walk, amen, in uncleanness. But you will walk in order that you might glorify the Father in heaven. So, brothers and sisters, questions should come. Have we changed? What are we bringing over in the 2022? Have you emptied your trunk? Have you thrown out the trash that had built up within you? Oh, it's easy, amen, to be angry and to be mad and to have malice and jealousy in your heart. But Paul now is talking about the purity of those who have been born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. He is saying, don't give, amen, man, amen, or the devil, amen, authority over your mind and your heart. He said, because now you belong to the master. He's saying here, amen, in verse number 20, he says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Christ did not walk 
in deception. Christ did not walk with lying tongues. Christ did not walk a man treating others lower than they should be treated. But Christ walked elevating and lifting up the poor. Amen. The poor in spirit as well as the poor in material things. God will meet our needs, amen, on this side of Chile, Jordan. Brothers and sisters, Philippians 4 and 19 says, For God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Therefore, we have learned, amen, the love of Christ. And now here are some of the instructions that Paul was giving to the church of Ephesus. He says in verse 21, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Oh, brothers and sisters, these are instructions, amen, that came from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul had preached the good news. Paul had let them know that salvation, amen, is real. He let them know through that of the power of the Holy Spirit that God's hand was now on them. And he says, now you have not learned to walk after the world. For the Bible says, be ye in the world, but be ye not of the world. Brothers and sisters, too many church folk are acting like the world. Too many, amen, are grasping at straws. Too many are still walking in darkness. Too many still won't give the Lord praise. They won't give God his glory. But, but I just stopped by to let you know that Paul was on to something as he brought about a new way Amen. For the Gentiles to live. No longer <clears throat> was it, amen, a practice, amen, a two for a tooth and an eye for an eye. But he says, uh, love your enemies. Amen. Treat those uh, who, who will despitefully use you and do all men of evil to you with love. He says this right here is not going uh, to be an easy journey. It is a spiritual fight. Paul wanted them to know that the devil is still raging. But in verse 22, he says here that ye put off concerning the form of conversation, the old man. In other words, uh, we should forsake, amen, those things uh, that have messed up lives, uh, that have caused hurt or harm uh, to someone else. We must try to right the wrongs. Amen. If we need to apologize, we need to apologize. The devil will never apologize. Oh, but we who are walking in the ways of Christ should show the love that Christ has shown us. So he says, put off the former conversation, the old man. So it says, now the old life of corruption, the old life Amen. Of doing those things. Amen. That will bring you down. Doing those things that would harm and mistreat others. Doing those things. Amen. Now that will protect the character of every human being. So brothers and sisters, he says, put off corruption. Uh, here he is saying, which is corrupt according to to the deceitful lust. So therefore, sin's deceptive nature. Sin the devil will put in your mind that you should not love your enemy. You should not treat everybody right. But sometimes we have to show those who won't show us the goodness of God. Sometimes we need a man to be kind to those that have never been kind to each of us. I don't care, amen, if it's friends. I don't care if it's those in your workplace. I don't care if it's family members. Oh, we got to learn how to love like Christ loved. We got to learn to walk as Christ walked. 
Amen. He says in verse 23, amen, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So brothers and sisters, uh, this lets me know uh, that there is a mind change. There is a change uh, of heart. There is a change uh, of conversation. There is a change uh, of the way we live. In order, amen, uh, amen, to bring about a new way for a new day. We got to do things that we haven't done. Amen. We got to do things, uh, amen, in a way that is still pleasing to Almighty God. But it starts with the mind. I got to have a made up mind that I'm tired of the worldly things. I'm tired of rambling. I'm tired of running. I'm tired, amen, of trying to deceive others. But let me just please the Lord. Paul is saying uh, spiritual renewal. A man starts with our mind and our heart. And in verse 24, it says then that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, brothers and sisters, you can be the lowest, amen, of sinners. You can think that you cannot be redeemed. You can think that you are so bad that you cannot change. You can think, amen, that you still, amen, would have a hard way to go. Amen. And you would not grow in the grace of God. But let me encourage you. Amen. Take off, amen, uh, that old man and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. So brothers and sisters, uh, here we are talking about a righteous life. And that only means that we are trying to do right. We are trying to treat everyone, amen, as God has entreated us. We're doing good when others are treating us bad. Amen. I heard Michelle Obama say, when they go low, we go high. Amen. Don't let anybody, amen, bring you down from your character. Don't let nobody bring you down from doing the right thing. Righteousness is another form of uh, justification. To be justified is to be made right through the blood of our crucified Christ. All oh, righteousness is only saying that I'm going to do my best to be honest. I'm going to do my best to treat everybody right. If it means to say hello, then say hello. If it means to say, may God bless you, amen, say God must bless you, amen. But it says in verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth, amen, with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. There was some confusion going on in the church of Ephesus and, and Paul wanted to put a stop to it. He wanted to make sure, amen, that new principles, amen, would be, amen, regenerated. Amen, through that of grace. So the regeneration through that of the grace of God. The undeserved, unearned love of God towards man, a sinner would take hold, amen, and we will know that God is working uh, in changing uh, our lives. We can't change uh, our own lives, uh, but we must uh, allow God uh, to lead us uh, along the way. Oh, Paul uh, said this must be uh, a new way uh, for a new day. Oh, God has allowed us to see a new year and we must come in with joy, gladness, and praise. 
Oh, I don't know uh, who been burdened down, uh, but we've had uh, a hard year. Uh, we've had uh, two years uh, filled with sickness, uh, sadness, uh, and woe, uh, but yet uh, we are still standing uh, by the grace uh, of Almighty God. Uh, and the Bible says uh, in verse number 26, uh, it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So he says, being born again and washed in the blood of the crucified lamb means that even though we don't like certain things, Paul was saying, you hate the sin and not the sinner. Huh? So he said love huh? uh, every man uh, according to how God huh? has shown love huh? to you and me. Huh? He says uh, try to rectify uh, uh, any anger uh, that you may have. Huh? Any discord huh? that you may have. Huh? Try to rectify it uh, and let not the sun huh? go down upon your wrath. He says, uh, before you lay down at night, uh, you ought to go to the Lord uh, uh, seeking uh, uh, his guidance, uh, giving it all uh, over to the Lord. Uh, that he may cover you all night long. And it goes on to say that you should not give place to the devil. Indignation and satanic invasion. A man rest, a man the devil. He will come in and try to mess up your your life. So I stop by just to let you know on this journey that we are on, on this journey that God has set us on. He wants us to know that we have a holy walk with Almighty God. We have a new way of walking uh, in the name uh, of the Lord. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, so he told me to tell you uh, uh, that when uh, uh, we come together, uh, when uh, uh, we find ourselves uh, in a spiritual battle, uh, uh, that God uh, is wanting us uh, to walk uh, in the newness uh, of Almighty God. Uh, can't you see uh, how good uh, the Lord uh, has been uh, to every one of us? Uh, so I come uh, to bear a record uh, that the God that we serve uh, is an awful God, awesome God. Uh, he reigns uh, over our lives. Don't give place uh, uh, to the devil, he says. Uh, don't let the devil uh, uh, steal your joy. Uh, don't let the devil uh, try to ruin uh, your life. Uh, so I come uh, to let you know. Uh, let the joy uh, of the Lord uh, reign uh, uh, in your spirit. Uh, for the Bible says uh, uh, that so we be many members on one body in Christ that lets me know that Christ wants us to come together with the spirit of glory and praise with the spirit of Christ our Savior ain't the Lord alright so I stop by on this new year to let you know we come in a new way because we have a brand new day. We come in out of 2021 with all of the struggle, with all of the wearing of masks, with all of the distancing and the hand washing, with all of all 
God. God has said you are still standing even in the midst of disease and pestilence. We are still standing. Some have been low, but God has picked you up. Some have been ill, and God has healed you up. It's the Lord all right, but we who are crossing over, we ought to give God show the praise. I know pilgrim, we've come a mighty long way. Ain't the Lord all right? So the Bible said, let them know in verse number 30 he said let them know that we should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God whereby we are sealed until the day of redemption so he says let it go praise my name lift up your voice and don't be ashamed Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Jesus Christ, I know who saved me. I know who healed me. I know who has kept me. Come on, Paul. Ain't the Lord all right? I was a hard head, he said. I was one that did not believe. But one day he showed himself to me. Put your name in that place. Where were you when the Lord showed up and showed himself to you? Where were you when God changed your life? Where were you when God started blessing your life? Where were you when God started favoring your life? Ain't he all right? Come on, pilgrim, and praise the Lord. We got something to praise him for. For the devil wanted to diminish us. The devil wanted to defeat us. The devil devil wanted to humiliate us, but God, oh, but God, stepped right in, right on time, ain't the Lord all right, this is a new day, this is a new day, and we must come in a brand new way, nothing will be the same, we're going to have to praise him wherever we are, we're going to have to serve him Wherever we are, we're going to have to listen to him wherever he are. So I come to let you know, because of Jesus, we have this right. Because of Jesus, we can praise the Lord. Because of Jesus, we have joy. Oh, unspeakable joy. Can I get a witness? Ain't the Lord all right? Somebody ought to say, I know the Lord for myself and I know that the Lord has done great things for me can I get a witness <coughs> ain't the Lord all right so I stopped by on my way to glory just to let somebody know life is too short to walk around angry life is too short to walk around letting someone steal your joy can I get a witness so I come to let you know the angels praise the angels sing the shepherds praise the wise men praise praise. The wise men gave. So I come to let you know that God has been good to us. God has made a way for us. He made a way by sending his son. He made a way about him walking this earth. He made a way when he went to the cross. He made a way when he died on that cross. He made a way when he went to the grave. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Can I have a few 
the Holy Ghost feel people to praise him. We got to come in a new way in this new day. Don't bring old junk into the new year. Let's look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help come from the Lord. He's all right. He's all right. I know he's all right. Can I get a witness? Can you praise his name? He's all right. I know he's all right. Can I pray? Thank you. Thank you. A new way for a new day. Some of us need to let go of the past that we might rest in the Lord in the days to come. Don't let the devil steal your hopes, your dreams, and your prosperity. For the Bible says that when you are tried, by the fire, you will come out as pure gold. And brothers and sisters, we're going to have some more to praise God for. He's not through with us yet, and he's going to bring us through. And as we get ready to go into this new year, I encourage you, to, ex to exalt yourself. When I say exalt, I mean elevate in your mind how good God has been. The song says encourage yourself. And that's what it's going to take right now. There are times that all of us will have to encourage ourselves. But we have to always know that according to the 30th verse, all of us have been sealed until the day of redemption. We are sealed by God. We are witnesses of the moving of the Spirit of God. We are witnesses that God can change. And he can change each of us. Now, I want you to think about something. If God changed you, can he not change others? The story was told, and there was one named John. John was a drunk. John was in the street. Many times they would see John laying in a corner or in a gully, drunk. Had no pride within himself. But one day he met Jesus. And John got saved, and they cleaned him up, and he joined the church. And as John joined the church, he became an usher, a doorkeeper. And one Sunday morning, the story says that this young lady who had a sinful life came to church. And in her coming to church, she saw what looked like John on the door, greeting her with a smile, handing her a program as she went in. And she found out that it was John. She sat through the service. And as she sat through the service, and the pastor gave the call to salvation, this lady got up and came down and gave her life to the Lord. After service, the pastor requested to just speak with her. And he said, excuse me, young lady. He said, but what was it about my sermon that uh, 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 convicted you to come? And the young lady said, pastor, I don't mean any harm. But it wasn't anything you said in your sermon. And he said, oh, he said, well, what prompted you to come? He said, when I came in, 
She says, I haven't been here in a long time. And then I saw John back there on the door, ushering in the Lord's house. And I knew John's life before I saw him today. It says, and I said to myself, if God can do this for John, he can sure enough do it for me. She said, that's why I came. So brothers and sisters, may we, we may have some Johns out there. We may have some Sally Sue's out there. But God is able to save you and to clean you up as well. I'm going to give the call to discipleship. And if there's someone who would like to be saved, let me entreat you to repeat after me right now. Father, forgive me of my sins. I ask you into my life. I ask, O oh God, that you would mold me and shape me into what you would have me to be. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he rose and I, I believe that he has all power. I believe he stood in my place. So I ask you now, meet me where I am. Work on me and I will give you glory. I will give you honor and I'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you repeated these words, the Bible says, not resurrected, but the Bible says, with the sincerity of your heart, God has now entered in. And all you have to do now is read your Bible, get into a Bible study or a Bible-based church. Start learning more about the man called Jesus. And he is sweet, I know. Praise the Lord. Let us now prepare for our communion observance. As we commemorate what Christ did for us over 2,500 years ago, as he sat at the table with his disciples for the feast of the Passover, and how he spoke out and said, this night one of you shall betray me. And he looks at Judas Iscariot and said, Judas, that that thou doest, go do thou quickly. Jesus arose and he took unleavened bread. He broke it in the midst of his disciples. And he said, this bread represents my body, which is given and broken for you for the remission of your sins. And he passed it around. He said, this cup represents my blood that is shed for you for the remission of your sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. Brothers and sisters, let us eat. Let us drink. And may the blessings of the Lord rest upon each and every one of you this day. In the year of our Lord, 2022, let us bow for prayer. Father in heaven, we ask your covering now. We are entering into a new year. We have started our walk in 2022. We pray that you will continue to be a miracle worker and a mountain mover. We pray, oh God, that you will allow this virus, amen, to be 
uh, uh, dealt with and that we might do what we need to do, that you might do what you need to do. We ask your covering over the sick, those who have fallen to it, those, amen, who are going through, amen, the process of trying to come back to a healed state. We know that you are in charge of all that is happening. And we ask now that you will bless those who may have given their lives to you today. A new way for a new day is our thought. And Father, we will not go into 2022 with old baggage. But we are going to look ahead with anticipation and with praise. With hope of a better day that is coming. We ask now, your covering over all of our sick, those who are prison bound, those who may not know the way, show them the way. Show them that you are God, and above you there is no other. We ask this now in the precious name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let every heart say, Amen. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of His Spirit continue to rest, rule, and abide with each of us now and forevermore. Let all hearts say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. And just remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed day. The blood yeah. that Jesus shed for me. I'm excited already. I'm sorry. Way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. have to do it but he shed the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never never oh, never Yeah.
Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. 